Shout out to Jermaine Franklin for giving AJ his props. He was asked who would want to fight between Anthony Joshua and Dillian White. He said it should be an easy fight for Anthony Joshua. Paraphrasing. He's saying Joshua should have no problems with Dillian White. Hear that, Dillian? And uh, Franklin got, you know, to spend 12 rounds with you, 12 rounds with AJ. He said AJ would have no problems. And now Malik Scott comes out talking about that this current AJ would um, lose in three rounds to Deontay Wilder. And let's say AJ did lose. <clears throat> I'm sure he wouldn't fall from a phantom punch, Malik. A phantom punch, Malik. <laughs> but, uh, you know, of course Malik Scott's going to big up his guy, Deontay Wilder. But I thought, and I did a video about it, it's either on my backup platform at WJ or maybe on um, the J. Roos Theory. You can go through I have playlists on both. But I talked about the Deontay wilder Hellenius fight looks suspect to me because the way Deontay just kind of tapped his chin, didn't even fall, follow all the way through, and Hellenius is just out. I mean, he just can't move. I'm like, oh, boy. So I don't know about that. But I just think it's interesting, too, you know, people like to talk about AJ needs to drop weight. It's like Stacy McKinley was saying, you need weight to take a punch. And I think he should come in at 255 against Deontay Wilder to absorb the blow. That's why they're weight divisions. George Foreman, for example, when he came back, he was like 250-ish, two, maybe 260 at some time, at some point. But George Foreman never failed in his comeback. When he was the lighter George Foreman at 220, he was getting knocked down. And by uh, and by today's standards, you need to have a higher weight to absorb punches, especially from a puncher. Not saying Deontay Wilder is the hardest puncher in the heavyweight division or in history, as some would suggest. <laughs> But he can punch, so I believe you need to wait for AJ to come in at 230 and then take a shot from from Deontay. I don't know if that would be uh, a nice thing to absorb. <laughs> but um, I just, too, find it odd why nobody questions Francis Ngannou's weight, Cyril Gahn's weight, John Jones, but everybody's weight-watching Anthony Joshua, like he doesn't know what he's doing. He's a professional athlete. He knows what he feels good at. And you see he was in good shape. It's not like it was a crazy 255. <laughs> he wasn't breathing heavy, had his mouth closed in the later rounds. But um, I just mainly wanted to come on and talk about Franklin saying that uh, it'd be easy work for Joshua against Dillian White. Um of course, Dillian is supposed to, you know, defend himself and stuff. I just want him to give an honest assessment and stop trying to nitpick AJ when, you know, a lot of people think he lost his fight with Franklin, as I've been saying. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about all this stuff going on with AJ and the Weight Watchers. And uh, do you think Deontay Wilder... I had said before that Anthony Joshua would beat Deontay Wilder, and I still say that because he's the better boxer. And you remember, AJ only lost, uh, got stopped by Andy Ruiz, and he kept getting up still. Deontay Wilder was knocked out this last fight with Tyson Fury and was stopped in the second, and to me, he lost the first. So it ain't like uh, Deontay Wilder's got this uh, supreme chin but, you know, people are going to say AJ, um, you know, he's robotic. He's robotic. Um, was he supposed to be doing like dancing around like a featherweight? You know, he's a heavyweight. Why waste your energy? Fighters waste a lot of energy with punches that aren't doing anything and they're just moving all the time. You don't need to waste all that energy. 
Anyway, it's the J Roost Theory. Make sure to comment, share, subscribe. LSR forever. The reason I do this and be fearless. Yay, yay.